I got excited when my little girl asked me to make this wardrobe. So we'll head off to the shop and see how we get this done. At first I had some grand idea of how this build would go, with heaps of fancy joinery. However, with my daughter being the designer, she wanted to paint it, so it was to be an MDF build. Then I realised I've never built anything out of MDF. Dropping on my auxiliary tabletop and some foam backing, it was time to get the sheets of MDF onto the table for the initial layout. All the components were marked out and I found it easier to tackle these cuts with a track saw on my own as opposed to the table saw due to the size of the sheets. The sides, top, bottom and dividers were cut so as to build the main carcass. A bunch of strips were cut up and a bevel put on one edge as these will be used to form the shaker style panels and doors that my daughter slash designer wanted. I got some advice from a local cabinet maker on how to paint MDF edges. He said it was simple, sand the edges as smooth as possible and paint it. So I paid particular attention to all the edges throughout the build. After all the strips were made up, I started on the side panels, cutting them to length and laying out for the tapered legs. This angle was transferred over to the drop saw and the taper cut. A quick layout to see all is good and then the sides were flipped over so that the brad nails would be put through from the inside. For the back, a gauge was used to set to the thickness of the backboard to create a rebate. The front was flushed, glued and brad nailed in place. This was a common theme of the build throughout. Then with a block plane, I matched the bevel on the bottom of the legs. Infill pieces were needed to make up the frame and panel look. A matching bevel was done at the table saw with a sliding miter gauge, glued and nailed in place. Just don't forget to sand any inside edges and fill any holes as you go. I had all the components clearly marked out from before, which always makes these builds easier. I went for Dow joinery and used the centering jig and drilled away. Placing a guide block on the mating piece and checked all was flush. Using these Dow centering points, the other side was marked with a few light taps of a mallet, leaving a nice witness mark. My daughter kept coming in and inspecting my work and wanting an update. The pressure was on. The mating dowel holes were drilled and the gluing process had begun. The nervous point of no return. Things can get a bit awkward, but with some forward planning, totally achievable on your own. As many clamps as possible were chucked on, always checking for square. However, there is no sitting down at this stage, as a little boss could pop her head in at any moment. You might have noticed that the legs looked a bit thin. So some strips were cut, glued and laminated together. A block cut and then a taper matched and another transfer to the adjoining side. Then all cleaned up at the linisher. Now I could smother the block in glue and clamp it home until all the legs were complete, giving that nice, thick, tapered leg look and adding strength. A bead of glue was applied to the back of the carcass and the backing board put in place within the rebate created earlier and all brad nailed into place. I wanted to add these furniture slides to the bottom of the feet and considering MDF doesn't have a great structural integrity I decided to drill and glue a hardwood dowel in place and then screw into the dowel. This will become a common practice for all the hardware that gets fitted in this project. Now it was on to making the drawer. To determine the drawer width, I just placed the two drawer slides together and snuck up on the cut until I had a snug fit for the back panel. The drawer front has the same width 
but just needs to match the height to the drawer opening. The drawer face was made using the same method for the sides by gluing and brad nailing the pre-made strips on to give it that frame and panel look. A groove was cut on all four sides of the drawer to accept the drawer's bum, just moving the fence over slightly to get a snug fit. I went for the same method of joinery as before and used dowels, gluing the back and two sides together, dropping in the bum and tapping on the front, obviously clamping and squaring up. The groove for the drawer bottom was filled and sanding those edges took place. A spacer was used to help keep the drawer slides in position as they were marked and fixed into place. The good old Aussie workhorse was being used, the milk crate. I started working on fitting the drawer when the little boss questioned me about playing card games. I explained to her that we use these as shims or spaces to get an even spacing or reveal around the drawer. Now I could pull the drawer slide out to its first mounting point, fix it in position and then repeat until all done. A little fine tuning was done with the hand plane to achieve a good and even reveal. The doors were made up in the same fashion as the carcass sides and the drawer front. And wanting to beef up where the screws would be put in for the hinges, once again I put in some hardwood dowels as to get more purchase on the screw threads. I like to mark out the hinges with a knife and the depth with a marking gauge. It was easier to lay the carcass on its side and with the bevel down chisel away then coming in with the router plane and a final clean up. It was nice to use and put to practice my new shiny hand tools. The little boss had done well at choosing all her hardware and with the aid of a vex bit the hinges were mounted. The door was sat in place and marked where the hinges would go and once again reinforced with hardwood dowels. If you have gotten to this point you might be liking this video. So if you would like to hit the likey button, that would be super appreciated. I made the doors initially fat, and after a test fit, trimmed them to size at the table saw. After refitting the doors, I hit a snag. The doors weren't closing flush. The heads of the screws and the hinges were protruding, so I had to go in and countersink the holes deeper until all good. The boss had given me a list of accessories, one being a shelf for the top which just sat on some cleats, some fancy looking handles, a jacket hook and I suppose I should install a rod to hang the clothes on. Then came a girl's best friend, the mirror. It came with instructions. I thought you just looked at it. After the mirror was installed, I tested it out and things were looking super fine indeed. There were a few spots were a bit rough looking, so filler was used and sanded back before painting took place, and both methods turned out really good. The little designer decided she wanted a moulding placed on top, and she was undecided of which colour so we made it out of pine, so that it could be stained later. First a chamfer was cut on one edge, then a rebate to the underside, then all was cleaned up with a bench plane. The mitres were cut and trued up at the shooting board. Then a biscuit was used to glue up a U-shaped moulding. A series of countersunk clearance holes were drilled so that the moulding could be screwed in from on top. All got stripped down and after stealing all the kids bed sheets and setting up a painting area, it was time to apply the undercoat, firstly cutting in the edges and then filling in between. 
After the undercoat, it's a good time to sand or fill any imperfections, as the paint makes it stand out. The wardrobe got two coats of a water-based enamel, and as you can see, I learnt my lesson from day one and wore a respirator this time. I also switched over to my Wagner sprayer, which is super user-friendly and gave a great result, especially with water-based paints. Eventually, the managing director chose her colour for the moulding, which was stained and then coated in a clear poly. This was the confusing part for me, remembering where everything goes as it was time for assembly. So as always, remember to get out there and make and create. This was my first attempt at an MDF build and paint, and I was surprised at how easy it was and the result I got. Just remember, sometimes you can get distracted during a project like I did. Now the nervous part. The final inspection by the managing director, designer, and most importantly, my little girl. The best part she liked was the mirror, and I didn't even make it. If you like my stuff, jump on board for the ride. Until next time, get out there and give it a crack. You would build a thousand wardrobes to get one of these.